Welcome back, Nerd Squad. A crazy thing in the world of supers is that while many need powers in order to be able to fight off the forces of evil, most supervillains can still be considered insanely powerful without even needing superhuman abilities. To be super evil, apparently all you truly need is imagination, and often some brilliance or just normal human level brute strength. Ideally, both. Today we'll take a look at some of the most feared villains who need no superhuman abilities to back them up as we count down the top 10 most dangerous supervillains with no powers. And be sure to stick around till the end of this list where I will have some bonus content coming your way. Alright, let's get counting. Number 10. Scarecrow. While Scarecrow might not have any powers to speak of, his brilliant mind has granted him lots of tricks and abilities. One of the most well-known tactics of his is to use his fear toxin, which causes those exposed to have vivid hallucinations of their greatest fears. He also has a terrifying appearance and possesses some immunity to various toxins and poisons due to his exposure to chemicals. In the past, he has managed to use his fear toxin to attempt to poison all of Gotham, and has more recently been busy terrorizing those outside of Gotham in Bloodhaven, including Dick Grayson, who he actually came quite close to defeating during his attempt to take over the city of Bloodhaven. Number 9. Black Mask While Black Mask might not be as popular as some of the others on the list, in some ways I would argue that he is more dangerous, especially when you are dealing with him one on one. Black Mask is a twisted sociopath who often tortures his foes who he manages to capture. He's not only played a supervillain to Bruce Wayne's Batman, but he's even become a great supervillain to Batman's sometimes ally, Catwoman. In one story, he's responsible for torturing Selina Kyle's sister, Maggie, killing her husband, and forcing her to commit cannibalism by eating him which ultimately drives Maggie insane. The feud between Black Mask and Catwoman became so intense that she eventually snapped and even in one story was responsible for killing him. Number 8. Harley Quinn While Harley Quinn in the comic book world is ever more closer to the title of anti-hero in her new animated series, she set out to prove herself as the baddest bad guy ever, locking her sights on becoming an established member of the Legion of Doom. She wants to prove to not just herself that she can be just as evil and dangerous as the next villain, but also to her ex, the Joker. Harley wants the world to see her for who she is, bad to the core, and in the series she even manages to take on and win against the Joker, leaving Gotham on fire. But actually, with Batman MIA and possibly even presumed dead. Number 7. Bullseye One of the best shots when it comes to the supervillain crowd. He can fire any weapon and throw anything, even teeth, and not miss. I even think he may have better aim than Hawkeye himself. I know, this is a controversial opinion, but... The two are at least on the same level for sure. Bullseye is also completely criminally insane. He kills without remorse and sometimes without even any interest in doing so. He's also the man responsible for killing two of Daredevil's loves of his life and has made Daredevil's life a living hell in more ways than just that. In the Netflix series, Kingpin hires this assassin to torment Daredevil just like in the comics. And in the show, Bullseye decides to go on a killing spree dressed as Daredevil to accomplish said task. He even managed to finally kill Matt Murdock during a final showdown with Daredevil in the miniseries End of Days. Number 6. Kingpin When it comes to the life of Matt Murdock and sometimes the life of other superheroes who get in his way, you can't go bigger than Kingpin. Wilson Fisk is so brilliant, so imposing, and so terrifying that he rules with an iron fist. Not the iron fist, just an iron fist. You know what I mean and very few dare to cross him. He knew who Daredevil was for the longest time, but chose to keep his identity under wraps. That's how confident Fisk was that he didn't need to leak it in order to ruin Matt's life. In fact, Kingpin managed to figure out a lot of super secret identities, proving how well connected and sharp he is. He also prompted Peter into beating him within an inch of his life when it was revealed that he was the one responsible for an assassination attempt that landed Aunt May in the ICU. Savage. He paid for that one though. He definitely paid for that one. Number 5. Ra's al Ghul, or Ra's al Ghul, depending on how you want to say it. Like Batman, Ra's al Ghul is very much a self-made man. The biggest difference between the two is that Batman attempts to stand for justice, while Ra's al Ghul is a powerful criminal mastermind. In fact, he is one of the few who can rival Batman when it comes to all the skills and training that he has had, as well as his amassed knowledge over the years. Of course, Ra's has a lot more time to work on himself and be 
become so skilled. And this is due to his use of the Lazarus Pits, which has helped him to stay eternally young, heal, and basically be considered immortal through their use. Of course, tons of people, superheroes and villains alike, have used the Lazarus Pits to come back to life or heal themselves throughout comic book history. And while some might think this means he has a superpower, it just he just has access to the Lazarus Pits. It's not it's not his power. He doesn't own it. I mean, he uses it the most, but other people come through. Number four, the Red Skull. A villain so evil, even the Joker didn't want to work alongside him during a crossover with Captain America and his sidekick Bucky and Batman and his sidekick Robin. Johann Smith's appearance might make you think that he has powers, but although he's stolen some powers a few times, for the most part, the most dangerous thing about him is just how evil he really is. His love of violence and murder began a long time ago, back when he was just a young boy in love. Johan was actually born into an abusive household and immediately was almost killed by his father, who attempted to drown him when he was just a newborn. Later in life, Schmidt became a runaway orphan and thief, who was later taken in by a Jewish shop owner. He and his daughter were the first people to really show Johan kindness. In defending them, he committed his first murder, and frustrated when the daughter did not seem to appreciate his help, he repaid their kindness by assaulting her and leaving both her and her father for dead. This was the moment that Johan first realized how very much murdering and causing pain to others brought him joy. And he also realized how much he cared about power. Number three, Ozymandias. Ozymandias is so skilled that he even makes you think he has superpowers. He's so brilliant, he figured out how to move quickly enough to catch and stop a bullet. Something that has only really been posed as possible in magic shows that pull off the trick using the typical tactics of distraction and sleight of hand, simply making it look like they caught a bullet while likely they just had a bullet on them the whole time, found a way to make you think that they caught it. But Adrian Veidt is so well studied, he's obviously discovered a way to pull off this trick in real life with real stakes. His superior intellect is what he relies on for everything. And in a sense, the way he manipulates people into doing what he wants almost appears just like a magic trick. He He's able to think and plan so far ahead, distract those he targets so well that they never even think to suspect him. And in truth, unless he reveals his plot to you, you'll probably never even know that he was involved in what happened at all. Number two, Lex Luthor. In his efforts to destroy Superman, Lex has gone to great lengths. He's even successfully campaigned and been elected as president of the United States. Not only that, but his ire for soups is so strong that it has even extended to the Justice League as Lex was also the man who put together the Injustice League Unlimited crew, whose main aim was revealed to be world domination through coming together. Unfortunately, the villains weren't as good at working together as their heroic counterparts counterparts and eventually they were defeated. But even then, Lex claimed that he was so brilliant that even the destruction of the Injustice League Unlimited and his capture were all part of his master plan, apparently. Number one, Joker. Despite not having any powers, Joker remains one of the most iconic and dangerous villains of all time. While not all of his ideas have been winners, all of them have definitely been pretty creative. And while some of the more outlandish plots have flopped, Joker is still known for some of the most dastardly plots in all of comics. In the non-canon story Killing Joke, he was responsible for paralyzing Barbara Gordon in an attempt just to drive her father, Commissioner Gordon, insane. He is basically single-handedly responsible for Superman snapping and and losing it in the Injustice universe. He killed Gordon's wife point blank after making her drop her weapon by tossing a baby at her. When Joker was Emperor Joker, he was responsible for devouring and thereby destroying the entire population of China. He killed and tortured various Robins, and some still believe he may have had involvement in the death of Bruce's parents. Joker is one of the most creative and disturbing villains around. He's sadistic, chaotic, and unpredictable, making him an insanely dangerous man to deal with, even when you are on his side. Thank you so much for watching Nerd Squad. I hope you enjoyed this list. I just love how many powerful supervillains there are out there who rely on just their wits alone and sometimes additional gadget accessories to get things done. For my bonus content, I'd like to share with you an honorable mention that I have. Poison Ivy may be well known for her plant control powers, it's true, and the abilities to manipulate and control the minds of her victims. But just a friendly reminder that Pamela Isley hasn't always been known as deadly just because of her powers. Behind her, like many other 
are good supervillains, there's a brilliant mind. In fact, in the Batman animated series, when we are first introduced to Pamela, it is her knowledge as a botanist and her insane passion for the environment that makes her so deadly. And this is all just in our first introduction to her in the show. Who are some of your favorite non-powered villains? What do you think are some of the most important traits when it comes to being a villain? What do they need in order to become super deadly? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to give this list a thumbs up on your way down there if you love supervillains as much as we do. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you as always to stay nerdy YouTube.